Hey guys, it's Philbert Green here, and just to let you know that this big ass box arrived this afternoon, and this contains finally arrived my copy of Resident Evil 3 The Board Game. So, without further ado, let's get inside and have a look at what it looks like. Stars. So, first thing out of the box is the Last Escape box. Now, as far as I'm aware, all this has in it is. Um, all the variant sculpts and miniatures for the board game that are unlocked via the Kickstarter stretch goals. So we will have a look at that when we open it. So let's see what's next. We've got ah, the terrain pack. Now this is um, doors, typewriters, walls, staircases, you name it. Basically just um, where there would be a wall or a doorway on the board marked by a token or, or, or a mark on the tile. Uh, now instead we have a 3D piece of terrain that we can put down um, to just to give it a bit more depth fitting with the with all the miniature models that are gonna be fitting on there. Right, what's next? Hey hey, the retro pack. Firstly, Steam Forged, amazing uh, artwork on the front there. Absolutely love it, absolutely love it, look at that. Uh, so this is basically, this should be all of the cards in, uh, from the game that are included with the game, so all character profiles, weapon cards, anything else like that, um, but they're all redone in the style of the video game inventory from Resident Evil 3 uh, on the PS1. So we'll have a look at that when we open them up. Next up, aha, we've got the... Uh, extra dice. So, uh, so there's a set of dice in the, in the game already. We've got another set of dice that came with it, which is um, in a cool T-virus test tube. Uh, next up is the ah the Resident Evil 2 Kickstarter tiles. Now these, uh, if you backed Resident Evil 2, which unfortunately I didn't, I was a bit too late for that Kickstarter. But if you backed it, you got these for free. Uh, otherwise they came with different pledges or you could add them on. Now my uh, my one came with these because I, I went for the all-in pledge. And basically what these are are tiles that are backwards compatible with the Resident Evil 2 board game. But uh, they're a lot brighter. If you have a look, all the details are a lot brighter. A lot of, they pop out like a lot much more. It's one of the, one of the huge um, like uh, complaints was that the tiles were a bit too dark on Resident Evil 2. It's nothing nothing bad, they're not bad, but they're just a bit too dark to see what's going on. So we have those, which would be great for replaying Resident Evil 2, and I think they'll fit in with Resident Evil 3 as well. Two smaller boxes up next. The Monster Box and the Kickstarter exclusives. So as it says on the tin, this one has Kickstarter exclusives, and this one has monsters. So basically more enemies and bad guys, and this one has um, exclusive Kickstarter stuff. An ultimate box in the box is the City of Ruin, Resident Evil 3 City of Ruin. Now this is the expansion pack, so the core game, you explore the Uptown District, the Downtown District, the Commercial District, and the RPD before you finally make your way to the Clock Tower, where you fight Nemesis Stage 2, and then that is the end of the core board game itself. Now the City of Ruin is the expansion pack, which carries on, containing the park, the graveyard, the hospital and the dead factory. Take note, Resident Evil 3 Remake developers. Which should leave, finally... Ooh, that's big and heavy, that's what I like. Big and heavy, which means there's a lot to look at in there. We have Resident Evil 3, the board game, core set, with the Kickstarter exclusive box and uh, on the side, I'll show you when we crack this open, uh, are all the names of all the Kickstarters who backed this campaign as well. So, let's crack these things open and have a look at what's inside. Stars. So, pop the lid for the uh, Resident Evil 3 core uh, set of the board games. Let's have a quick look at what we've got here. So this is uh, a game tray. This was one of the Kickstarter stretch goals that we unlocked. Um, and these are basically to, you can put figures and cards and things in there and it keeps track of where you are while you're playing the game so it's quite handy again storage for all of the miniatures so it looks like we've got here we've got some uh let's see, take this off we've got some some zombies along the bottom here we've got resident evil 3 jill valentine right there focus there we go Resident Evil 3 Jill Valentine along with the uh, three other UBCS mercenaries in there. Uh, as well as some zombie dogs in the end here. And what appears to be 
I've forgotten the name of these things. A drain demos, that's what they're called. A drain demos there. So that's pretty cool. Some of the miniatures. Uh, there's a second one in here which has. Let's just pop that lid off as well. It's playing hard to get. Uh, just a lot of zombies. So we've got a lot of zombie miniatures in here. There's at least. 15 zombie miniatures in the course set alone. Ooh, don't notice the camera. Got cards. This looks like the tension deck from Resident Evil 2, which adds tension to the game. And uh, that looks like it might be more tension deck files, but it also has the Gravedigger card on the front, so that's going to be interesting to have a look at. Um, I won't do that on this, but because they're just cards, but there's a set of dice, like I mentioned earlier. These are like the studs for the, the wheels. Now, what's in here? What have we got in here? Uh, aha! We have the equipment cards, starting, it looks like, with the trusty shotgun. And these look like more item cards as well as scenario cards, which will uh, be hopefully unlocking as we progress through the campaign, as this game is board game based. Now, what do we have here? We have a gravedigger. We have a gravedigger. I'm not sure if that's the boss. I don't think it is the boss, because the boss should be in the city of Rim. But it might be. I don't know. We'll have a look. Uh, ah, here he is. Here he is, my boy. Here's my boy. Stars. Yes. He is going to be very, very fun to play with. And we also have second stage Nemesis right there as well from the clock tower. So that's going to be interesting. He's going to be a bastard to fight, I bet you. Okay, put him back in there. Let's have a look at what is under here. Haha, <laughs> excellent. Resident Evil 2 had one of these, and I was starting to doubt if Resident Evil 3 had one as well. But this game does contain scenes of explicit violence and gore. That's pretty cool. I like that. And, ah, yes, now I've heard about this. The, this is the campaign tracker. So as you progress through the game, you unlock all these different stages of the campaigns as you find items and pathways that you need to uh, move along. And this is the uh, threat level for the city, going to the highest to lowest there. Um, which you don't want to get it up to the highest one. As you progress, you need to find you need to find the four items: the oil additive, the fuses, sorry, the oil, the fuses, the cables, and the oil additive to unlock the clock tower, like in the original video game, which is pretty cool. But this is paper; it's not card. I expect it to be card. I mean, you can't expect it from everything, so you know, it's not bad. But I thought it would be card, just like um, like it looked like in the promotional videos, as it is already starting to bend in the corner there, just where it's been sitting in the box. So I may have to look into getting this laminated, or at least getting a card version printed. But that's cool. Here we have the rule book. Going to have a good read of that as soon as I finish making this video. And the scenario book. So this should tell us exactly what we need to do to play each of the levels, how the maps are all laid out, what enemies go where, and how we successfully escape from Raccoon City. Apologies, the video cut out there. So we'll just have a quick look at this. Which is all of the tiles. Look at this, this looks awesome. So we've got, that looks like the internal of the clock tower there with the piano. Um, more levels to fight and play through. Ooh, look, we've got the RPD entrance right there. They've really gone to town on this, really made this look much better than the uh, than the Resident Evil 2 ones. Not that Resident Evil 2 ones are bad, but this is just way, way better. Um, got burning gas station forecourt there. More rooms inside where I can see to explore all the weapon wheels and dials, doorways, health tracker markers, corpses, doors, all the tokens and files you're going to possibly need, so we'll do that. We'll get, I will get into that shortly after I finish this video and have a look at everything that we've got. Also, all these names on the side there, pretty cool, those are all the Kickstarter backers. Uh, my name should be on there somewhere, not sure where, but I'll find that later. Stars. So next up, we've got the City of Ruin expansion pack, which carries on the story after uh, the clock tower. So let's open this bad boy and have a look at what's inside here. Ooh. So we've got here the City of Ruin uh, rule book and scenario book, which tells us exactly how we're going to escape from Wrecking City. We've got more tiles, presumably to do with different boss fights and different rooms to explore in Wrecking City. They've really actually like identified all the different rooms as well, whereas Reckon, uh, Resident Evil 2 board game only had a few tiles that differed between, the one, uh, between what we had to use. 
So there was like, this, you end up using the same street tiles and the same things. This looks like they've actually gone to town and made individual rooms based off the video game, which looks amazing. So holy hell, look at the size of these minis. Let's get in here. Let's get in here. Have a look at this. What have we got here? We've got all the cards for the boss fights and more tension deck cards I'm assuming, more miniature cards, that'll be newer items and door locking cards. We've got Hunter Gamma, the amphibian looking hunters that like to swim around in the park and the sewers. We have the uh, Hunter Beta, the uh, ones from the hospital that Carlos ends up encountering that you uh, are an absolute pain in the ass to kill. We've got miniature gravedigger worms that you can find in the uh, little sewer underpass from the from the from the uh, the video game. Sorry, and we also have if you'll come out the gravedigger himself. Now that is the boss fight. That is the boss fight one for sure. Look at the size of that man. Wow. Okay, that's going to be fun to fight. As well as you can't forget, can't forget be forgetting him. Stage 3 Nemesis fought in the Railgun Room of the Dead Factory. Look at that. This is going to be fun, let me tell you. This is going to be a fun game to play. That's pretty much it for the City of Ruin expansion because uh, you use all the leftover tiles and the new tiles that you've just gotten and things. So we will... Uh That's pretty much it for that. So we'll move on to, we'll move on to the next box. Stars. All right, next up we've got the Terrain Pack, the Retro Pack, and the Last Escape Pack. I'll go through all of these at the same time. So, um, let's go through the Last Escape box first, because I'm curious to find out what this is. And I believe, yep, this box has got the rest of the names around the side that weren't actually, uh, couldn't fit on the main core box. So we've got the Last Escape booklet here. Uh, special rules for things, different things. Okay, this is quite interesting. This is like different game modes and things to play. That's gonna be quite fun and interesting. We'll have a look at that more in depth uh, after I've made this video. We've got separate tiles for boss fights and things. That, that's quite cool, separate tile there. And, aha, we've got more tiles as well as the alternate sculpts. We've got some crows in here. We've got some spiders, so there's the crows from the game, there's uh, the giant spiders there. We've also got uh, some brain suckers, these were like Kickstarter stretch goals that were unlocked. We also have the exclusive minis that we unlocked. So I think we've got Tyrell Patrick, Brad Vickers, Marvin Branner, uh, Dario, I forget his last name. I think that's a different Tyrell Patrick. Barry Burton, absolute legend, Barry Burton, and Murphy Seeker from the game there. So these are the, the uh, stretch goal exclusive, uh, stretch goal characters that will be unlocked, and I'm assuming this will be available for retail at some point as well, um, as it contains extra stuff for playing the game. So that's pretty cool. So we'll move on to the terrain pack next. Let's see what's in here. Now this is backwards compatible with Resident Evil 2. Now I never, I never kickstarted the Resident Evil 2 board game, so I missed out on this. It's quite hard to get a hold of these days, but luckily this is backwards compatible, so I've got everything I should need. So yeah, so you get plastic staircases just to give the game a bit more sort of life, as it were. We've got a whole bunch of different doors in here: doors, archways. There's some walls there, um, all kinds of stuff. That's pretty cool. And um, what do we have in here? This looks like you've got uh, Sinister Corpses, which are a gameplay mechanic. You've got Barricaded Up Doorways, that's a gameplay mechanic. There's an item chest right there. Uh, oh, an ink ribbon right next to it. Right, I don't know if you can see that on the video that well. Ink ribbon right there. Uh, as well as typewriter on top of a filing cabinet right there so yeah lots of different things just to give the game a little bit of a make it stand out a lot more and um, you don't have to use the tiles as well for doorways and things like that and staircases you can use um 3d terrain and make it look much more like a dungeons and dragons session 
And now we have the retro pack, which I know you're all itching to see what's in here. And basically, what it is, is it just redoes the cards, like I said, with original, even gone so far as to pixelate it, pictures and the same text from the video game itself to make them look like the inventory. It's all the cards that are, fe are featured in the game, all made to look exactly like they would if you were playing this on the PlayStation 1, such as the Gravedigger boss fight card there, done differently as well. So that is pretty interesting. I might have to play my first playthrough of the game with the retro pack cards instead of the regular ones, <laughs> just to make them stand out a little bit more. So that's what's in those boxes. So we'll move on to the final two boxes that came out of there. Start. So the last two boxes to mention are the Monster Box and the Kickstarter Exclusive Box. So let's dive right into them. These were part of the uh, all-in pledge that I got. So in here we've got a couple of uh, a couple more Drain Demos, four more zombie dogs, and it's like a whole different bunch of zombies, possible different sculpts of different zombies and things like that. So that's what that is, just to make sure you are never going to run out of... Uh, minis that are trying to chomp on you and the kickstarter exclusives should be all the alternate sculpts for the characters which they are so we've got jill's alternate outfit so you've got disco jill here policewoman jill in her rpd police outfit uh we've got nikolai and carlos in different poses there's carlos nikolai there we also have down here barry burton in the stars uniform which is the only Barry Burton model you should ever play with, to be honest. Uh, another version of Jill down there. I'm not entirely sure which version of Jill that is. I think it's Biker Jill is what that's meant to be. Um, then we have Mikhail with the anti-tank rocket launcher, because he's an absolute boss like that. And finally, Stars Jill. Jill in her Resident Evil 1 Stars outfit. That is pretty cool, if you ask me. And that's all that is in those boxes. So the only other things, like I mentioned before, is uh, just another set of dice in a test tube vial and the Resident Evil 2 uh, redo cards, which is, you know, that's just like, everyone said, oh, the only thing that I'd complain about Resident Evil 2 is that the tiles are too dark. And what did Steamforge go and do? They just made new tiles for you and brightened them up. That's a pretty, pretty good deal, if you ask me. Stars. And so, there you have it, Resident Evil 3 The Board Game. Now this is the all-in pledge that I went for, which has everything that you see here that I've just explained to you guys and shown to you guys. There was only one level higher than this, which was the S-Rank all-in pledge, which... Um, the only thing that was different was they gave all of the miniatures a wash with a paint, something like Nalm Oil, if you are a uh, Warhammer painter, which basically what it does is it brings out all of the features and definitions in the models and really makes them pop, like you can really see all of the definition on it, which frankly it looks great, but then they put this little blood spatter pattern on all of the hero characters, like playable characters, and it, that doesn't look too good to me, but the only reason that I didn't go for that was because I am planning to paint all of the miniatures featured in this box here. I know it's a lot, but I'll get through them eventually, because that's exactly what I did with Resident Evil 2, the board game. So I will end up with all my miniatures, hopefully, looking something like Leon and Claire here. From Resident Evil 2. And not forgetting Big Willy B. <laughs> so hopefully, yes, I'll end up painting them and they will hopefully be looking something like that, as and when. Um, but that's all there is to mention, except one more thing that was in the box, and I was incredibly hyped when I opened the box just to check everything was there before I made this video. Um, so I'm not going to replicate my hype again, but I am going to show it to you guys, and it was just sitting on the top of everything, and it was this. Just this card here. But you flip it over... Resident Evil, the board game, coming autumn 2021 to Kickstarter. Keep your ears to the ground, guys. Steamforge Games on Kickstarter. They are making Resident Evil 1. Now, based on the font and the picture on the reverse side, I'm guessing it's going to be made off of the remake 
of Resident Evil 1, which is going to be very, very interesting because it means we're going to have a lot of miniatures like at least Trevor and things like that to, to deal with, as well as a tyrant. And we're finally going to get ourselves a Wesker miniature to play as. That'll be fun. So um, that's it. That's basically it. That's everything that you get inside the box. So um, thanks very much, guys. I've been Philbert Green. I hope uh, that was entertaining for you guys to watch. Um, and I will update you guys as and when I start painting the miniatures. So thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Stay safe out there and be good.